Welcome to the next episode of DSEI Insights in Action. As always, we try to keep uh, the great topics ongoing and also learn, uh, share, and then envision what's coming in the future. And today it's my pleasure to have with us here uh, Colin Brown, who is a co-chair of Digital Supply Chain Institute for a long time, and also the CEO of Cascale. Colin, welcome. Thank you. It's great to, uh, great to be here. So Colin, let us uh, deep dive into the topic we have been discussing before and where you really brought a lot of light uh, going forward. And that's the topic of the uh, ESG in supply chain. And through some of the conversations, you know, you, you noted the importance of uh, setting the science-based uh, like data analytics approach to, you know, uh, as, as an engine uh, for, you know, the, the work in uh, ESG and supply chain. And that links to then how we can set the key performance indicators, the KPIs and metrics that companies should prioritize, you know, uh, to effectively measure the and report on their ESG success. Uh, yeah, no, but I think you articulated that well. You know, it's sustainability should be like any other discipline within the business. You know, it should be it should have clear clearly set goals and objectives and we should have a timeline and a process through which we measure our progress against it and and I think it was Peter Drucker says what gets measured gets managed and so sustainability should be one of those things that uh, that we have clear set goals against and we understand how we're going to deliver against them and science-based targets is the way that uh, you know more broadly the community or the has kind of aligned against trying to think about how we all work together against one single set of goals. So if you haven't set your science-based targets, I'd encourage you to uh, to get on and get them done. So it's actually now focusing on, you know, as you, as you beautifully said, like, you know, what gets measured that gets done. And on the other side with that, we can also uh, find where we honestly are on our journey so having that in mind, uh, when we have the ESG priorities and metrics, um, and you know that uh, Digital Supply Chain Institute is linking everything to constellations of uh, value. So what's your view of how ESG priorities and metrics uh, are a valuable part of uh, execution in uh, a setup like constellation of value for improvement and uh, compliance? Well, well, I think the first thing I would say is, and I think it's, it's one of the things that people are only just starting to understand is the fact that sustainability is becoming an operational imperative as opposed to necessarily just a uh, an advocacy driven voluntary kind of exercise so you know like any any cause uh you know the fact that legislation starts to be put in place requires businesses and, and brands and manufacturers to start to meet those standards and that kind of changes the dynamic of things and to me, this is where the operation side of the business, the supply chain parts of the business really starts to kind of lean into things and really add value. And we also know that when we look at the data, when we look at the information, we know that there are constellations, to be frank with you, of areas where there are bigger outputs of, of carbon than, than elsewhere. So understanding where and how you are working within that area, within that constellation. It's not just true from a supply chain, from an operational, from a commercial perspective. It's also true from a sustainability perspective, because more often than not, you are working with partners in a specific area where you have the rest of your network all kind of coming together. And by default, that's going to define where your impact from a sustainability perspective is going to be. So just building that into part of your overall model uh, is an incredibly important part of actually turning sustainability into an operational imperative. So uh, th there are a lot of moving parts, it seems like, and you know, uh, one can always uh, start from somewhere. But that leads me to the next question is like, uh, having in mind the complexity which we mentioned, right? Um, having in mind, uh, you know, the evolving uh, ESG standards, uh, how can businesses align uh, in order to maintain their cost efficiency and meet, meeting the customer expectations? Because we know these new things, they don't go hand in hand, right? So is there any way from your view how they can mitigate that? Well, I think it's it, you're right. They don't go hand in hand. Part of it is about investing for the future. 
uh, and you know, and we all know that sustainability legislation is only going to get tougher. So the sooner you actually start to make those investments, the the quicker you can start to depreciate them. So I would say to you, recognizing the fact that it, there's a balance of trying to get those two things aligned in a meaningful way, and you know that's what businesses do, and I'm sure that's what uh, your members are kind of working on. So I would say thinking about it from that perspective is incredibly important. I think the the second thing I would say is you don't. Although we are, we run a journey. There's no, there's not an expectations that we're going to solve all these problems tomorrow. And I would say, you know, just there's certain things we can all do tomorrow. Certain things we can start to work on together. Certain things we can align on. So taking those those smaller steps with regards to how you improve efficiency within your own operating model is incredibly important. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to rip out your investments, but it may mean how do you optimize the way in which you're investing in them to ensure that, you know, you are, uh, you're driving efficiency. You know, one simple example in, in many manufacturers, we have steam plants uh, that are producing steam for, for or, or hot water or whatever in, in order to utilize within the manufacturing process. Well, many of those places don't have steam traps. They're just not running optimally. So you're actually wasting a huge amount of energy in just operating those th that equipment. So investing in that equipment to make sure that it's running optimally, that in itself helps you move forward on your ESG and your targets that you need to put in place. So, you know, it, it, you don't necessarily have to do it all in one go. It's about having a plan, understanding that investment timeline and understanding what you can do in the interim to start moving yourself forward. Thank you, Colin. And I'll tag along on, on one thing which you mentioned, you know, ESG is actually an investment in the future, but not only as a part of the uh, process or technology per se, but it's actually the, the mindset within the organization and then building it up towards customer. So bringing that forward, uh, we cannot run away uh, or close the discussion without uh, asking about what, what role of AI you envision uh, it as a technology playing within uh, ESG uh, arena, especially in uh, aggregating and harmonizing valuable data in between the companies? Because what we have seen with our members, one of the most difficult pieces is how you can car harmonize and aggregate data be between different players because they don't report in the same thing, they don't capture the same things, they don't organize data in the same way. What do you see AI can play in this arena? Well, to be to be frank, that's one of the reasons I joined Cascal. And for those of you that don't know Cascal, one of the things that powers this organization is a suite of tools that was introduced probably 10, 15 years ago, uh, which includes a suite of tools that helps manufacturers and brands look at their carbon footprint and understand where the their issues lie. And that suite of tools are being used by 40,000 manufacturing plants across this industry alone. And it's now starting to roll out into various other industries. So, you know, you have to have that data first before you can actually start to utilize it. So you, I don't think you can get over your skis too quickly on that. You need to actually start collecting that data in a meaningful way. And then, then to me, sustainability is one of these areas that's a pre-competitive kind of area at this moment in time. You know, we do need to work holistically across the entire supply chain to think through how do we actually unlock the value of, of supply chain. And so, again, I think having the data to begin with, looking across the entire supply chain network from both how you plan, make, source, ship and sell product and thinking through the mechanics of each of those and working with your partners as they unlock each of those individual areas. And then you can overlay that with data and analytics to better understand the total life cycle value of the product or the life cycle cost from a carbon perspective that you have of your product. So it's, uh, yeah, we're, we're, on the, we're in, in the early stages of this journey, but uh, I don't doubt that uh, as we continue to double it down and invest in these things that we'll actually start to kind of figure it out. Thank you, Colin. I will round up our conversation maybe with three key points uh, I, I learned uh, through the conversation. The first one is, you know, we, we are at the early stages and it's even not late to start now or soon from now. The right. second thing is it's all about partnership and data exchange. And then the third thing is this is an investment for future, not only from the side of the organization, but also building up on customer expectations. Right. So. I think, you put, I think you put that well, Marco. And I, the only thing I would say is it's, uh, 
it's not too late to start now. I think you have an imperative to start now. If we want to, to make an impact on greenhouse gases and we want to uh, to uh, to try and do the right thing for the planet, we kind of got to start now. The time, we should have started yesterday, but if you couldn't start yesterday, then start today. And on that notion, Colin, we can we can uh, close the conversation and I'll, I'll mention a line which, which you mentioned a little bit before is that, you know, start tomorrow with the first small step you can Correct. do. I agree. Well said. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Colin, for being with us. Uh, thank you all for joining us in this uh, session of uh, Digital Supply Chain Institute Insights in Action. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode.